Okay, classic uh, practice problem here for conservation of energy. This is number 15 from our sheet. Um, and the problem goes like this. We have a basketball player, um, uh, and uh, they take a 0.6 kilogram basketball, and they throw it down the court on a fast break. The ball leaves the player's hands with a speed of 8.3 meters per second. And then when the ball's at its highest point on the court, it's at 7.1 meters per second. If we ignore air resistance and anything that's going to, like, you know, bleed out energy here, like a non-conservative force, we're going to ignore all of that. If we ignore it all, then how high above the release point is the ball when it's at its maximum height? Now, your first gut for a problem like this might be to go back to what we did earlier in the year and do projectile motion. But that becomes a little difficult here because we don't know anything about the angle this ball is traveling at. We don't know anything about it. We just know how fast it left the player's hand. And then when it hit a max height, because the ball kind of had to travel in an arc, right? So if here's like a basketball, pew. Well, that's a bad arc. Pew. There's an arc. When it got to this max height, we know its speed was 7.1 meters per second. But other than that, like, we know nothing. We don't know the angle this is hit at. Like, we don't know anything about it. So the actual easiest thing to do here is to just use a conservation of energy. And using that, we could notice that this basketball, it starts at the player's hand. So, you know, we'll just draw a, a terribly drawn player over here. They're, it's a basketball player, so we'll make them very tall. And if we use this height of the ball as some initial position, we could use this idea of a reference point to work out our conservation of energy. To do this, we know that our energies initially have to equal the energies at our final point. So we can say initially there's some kinetic energy here. There is a 1 half mv squared, so 1 half times the mass of the ball, 0.6 kilograms, times the ball's initial velocity, which is 8.3 meters per second, squared. Plus, well, is there a gravitational potential energy? We do know the ball is going to go up some height h, but let's consider where we're holding it in the beginning. Let's make that our reference position. If that's our reference position, then there is no height above that. So there's no potential energy at this point because we're at the reference. Is there a spring here? No. So our initials are done. We just have some initial kinetic energy. On the final side of things, we can think about kinetic energy's potentials again. So we get a kinetic energy, 1 half times the mass of the ball, 0.6, times the final velocity, squared. So 7.1 meters per second, squared. And because the ball did arc, it did gain some height here, we're going to have some potential energy due to gravity, some mgh. So that mgh is going to be the mass of the ball, 0.6, times gravity, 9.8, and then multiplied what we're actually looking for here, the height. That's what we're trying to solve for in this problem. And there's no spring here, so we don't need to include a spring at all. And with that picture... And with that equation, this problem from a physics standpoint is finished. There's no more physics to do here. We thought about it. We drew the picture. We drew our terrible, super tall basketball player. At this point, it's literally just churning out numbers and cranking them out. So let's just be careful when we do this. There's a lot of spots to make mistakes. I like to bundle everything together initially. And when I do this, I am very careful that I start with the square value because I don't want to square everything. I just want to square the 8.3 and then the 7.1. So let's do the 8.3 side first, the initial. So 8.3 squared gives me 68.89 times 0.6, 41.33, divided by 2 gives me 20.67. So on the left, we get 20.67. And if you wanted units there, these would technically be joules because it's all energy. On the right side, 7.1 squared gives me 
times 0. 0.6 gives me 30.246 and 25, whatever. Divide by 2 gives me 15.12. And technically, these are joules as well. Oops. And if we add that, let's put the 0. 0.6 and the 9.8 together. That gives me 5.88 times the height h. If I want to combine terms, the 20.67 and the 15.12, I'm going to subtract 15.12 from each side. So 20.67 minus 15.12 gives me 5.55. And that's going to equal, because this went away, that's going to equal the 5.88 times the height. And if I want to get that height by itself, I need to get rid of that 5.88. Since they were multiplied together, I will divide by 5.88. Pushing. That goes away. 5.88 over here. Looks like I'm going to get a number close to 1, but a little bit beneath it. So 5.55 divided by 5.88 gives us our final answer for the height of the ball equaling 0 0.94 meters. And that's it. We really just drew a picture of our scenario, used our conservation of energy equation, making sure that we only included what we had, kinetic energies for the initial and final, and then for our gravitational potential energies, very, being very clever on where we called our reference position, having it initially be zero where that ball initially starts is nice because it got rid of the initial potential energy and that meant we were only left with the final. And once we did that, the physics was done and then we just churned out some mathematics. So with that, this conservative force conservation of energy problem is finished. In our next video, we'll take a look at another problem, um, this time with multiple objects. And then a little bit later on, we'll start actually looking at what happens when we get friction in on these problems. But until then, adios and take it easy.